Today we're talking about stay right laws in California. So the uh, since 1959 it's been the law to stay to stay right. Before that, you could drive in any lane you wanted. So California actually has some of the m more strict st stay right laws because in in Michigan uh on a divided highway, so where both of these lanes are going in the same direction, and then here's the divider, and then the other traffic is on the other side. Um, you have to stay right except when passing, which is the same in California. But once a, 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 a divided highway opens up to three lanes going in, in the same direction, in Michigan, you can drive in any lane you want. You're no longer required to stay right except when passing. But in California, you still have to stay right when passing even when there's uh, three three lanes. So let's cover the law. Uh, a lot of people are, are just doing this wrong. I don't know. I mean, we'll talk about some of the theories that I have. So uh, California Vehicle Code Section 21654 specifically A. Let's uh, read this and then we'll, we'll break it down. So notwithstanding the prima facie speed limits, any vehicle proceeding upon a highway at a speed less than the normal speed of traffic moving in the same direction at such time shall be driven in the right-hand lane for traffic or as close as practicable to the right-hand edge or curb except when overtaking and passing another vehicle, proceeding in the same direction, or when preparing for a left turn at an intersection or into a private road or driveway. So this is the part that was passed in 1959. Section B was passed in 1974. And honestly, it makes no sense because it... it basically, it says the, sa the same thing except th there's no exception for when passing or turning left and then it says basically if you're not staying in the in the far right lane then um, that's prima facie evidence that the driver is operating the vehicle in violation of subdivision A. So that doesn't I don't know. There's so the um, stats of 1974 added so many new pages. Um, so there's no analysis on why and why they added this uh, uh, available. So who knows why it's there? And there's really been no case law that um, proves any per useful purpose for for this section. So let's break down um, 21654a. So the word notwithstanding uh, basically m means um, despite right and you can read about oh, that in in Bl blacks law dictionary but there's also some some case law so um, prima facie basically means on its face but um, when we're talking about prima facie speed limits uh, in relation to the California Vehicle Code, that's the basically the, the default speed limit that you need, or the maximum speed limit, default maximum speed limit, unless it's posted otherwise. So in California, on um, highways that aren't in uh, a business or residential area that speed limit is 55. The reason why we're able to, to go faster than that on like 80 or or 5 is because it's posted faster. It's posted at 65. But if you're on a road and it's there's nothing posted and you're not in a business or residential area, then the speed limit is is 55. And then let's um, define highway. So a lot of people think a of a highway as uh, these div right divided roads where there's um, 
multiple lanes going in the same direction. Uh, it's basically a one-way road, but also uh, there's no entrances at, at all the side streets it, it crosses. There's just an entrance and exit um, every X num number of miles. So a lot of people call those highways. The California Vehicle Code describes that as a freeway. I call this personally, those is personally an expressway. But in uh, California Vehicle Code, highway just means uh, any street that basically is um, pu publicly funded and is designed specifically for ve vehicular traffic. So if we break down what this means, as is, is it says, despite the default speed limits, any vehicle proceeding upon a highway at a speed less than the normal speed of traffic moving in the same direction, right, than the rest of the supplies. So it doesn't, they're basically saying it doesn't matter what the speed limit is. If you're going slower than the speed of traffic, then this applies to you. So if the speed limit is 65 and you're driving 75, but the traffic is going 100, then this part applies to you and you need to move to the right. So let's um, bring up some scenarios. So first of all, I'm going to show you the proper way to pass, okay? So you are in the, the blue car, and you're coming up on the, the, the semi-truck. You're supposed to, uh, according to California law, we, you don't have to, but it adds some, some protections. You're supposed to, to let the person know that you're about to overtake them. And you do that by honking your horn real quick, like beep, or um, flashing your, your lights at them real quick. And w when you do that, it, it grants you some rights. So if you do that to them and you overtake them, then they're not allowed to speed up while you're passing them. If you don't do that and, and, you, and you go to pass them, um, then they're uh, allowed to speed up. So a lot of people in California won't even know what that means if you honk your horn and flash your lights at them. So they might speed up um, any anyway, whether they're supposed to or not. But if that ca ends up causing an accident, you'll you'll be in the right. So whenever you pass someone, you should do that. Um, and then. Um, don't forget to signal too, all right? So um, what you typically want to do is you want to signal first um, that you're about to ch um, move a left on the road, then um, signal to the person in front of you that you're going to overtake them with, with the horn or flashing your lights, all right? Move into the other lane, pass them, right? Signal again and, and, and move back over. You, you typically don't want to stay in this lane just because you know not only does the law say if you're not moving as fast as traffic that you have to stay right but it's just common courtesy to stay right all right so let's uh, cover some other scenarios all right so we have all right these vehicles driving and all in the right lane. All right. Who do you think is, is breaking the law? S s they're all driving to the right. None of them are breaking the law. All right. But uh, what's interesting here is if there's no one in front of the semi driver, right, and he is driving s slower than the speed of traffic. If you honk and um, and signal, or, or flash your lights at him, because um, he's driving slower than the rest of traffic, he's actually supposed to move even further right to allow you to to pass him. Now, again, most drivers don't know that, 
so they're not going to move right for you. All right, so the so let's talk about some other scenarios. All right, so this red car is next to the semi, and the blue car is behind them. And um, so even if the blue car is moving, you know, at a high rate of speed, coming up on the red car, um, and the red car notices that, and, and then they, they're honking their lights, and I'm sorry, honking their horn and flashing lights of the red car. The red car still not break the law as long as they're passing. And just driving in the left lane and there's a car in the right lane doesn't mean you're passing. You have to actually passing, be passing. You have to be making progress. So if if you have your cruise control set for 65 and um, you just keep driving next to this truck and you don't want to speed, speed up to pass him because that would be a violation of law, what you really need to do, even though it's going to piss off the guy in the blue car, is you need to slow down and move over and, and let the blue car pass. Right, so let's talk about some other scenarios. So s say there's uh, one car in the, in the left lane, all right? and they're driving under, under the speed limit. Are they breaking the law? No, because they only have to move right legally if they uh, are driving slower than the rest of the traffic. But it's common courtesy. Right? If you should really be driving as, as far right as you can all, all the time. Right, so now what if there's uh, two cars in the left lane? Who Who's breaking the law? So uh, it, it might not be obvious, right? So the, the blue car um, has a silver car behind him. So al almost always, if there's no car in front of you, I mean, that's pretty much a rule of thumb. If there's no cars in front of you, immediately in front of you, but there is one in front of you, you're probably driving slower than the speed of traffic moving and should move over. But not always the case, right? So if you're driving in the left lane just because you, you know you don't like getting over all the time, you want to stay in the left lane as often as you can, and you see this silver van be behind you, even if he's coming up on you and you move right, he doesn't pass you, right? He just stays in the left lane because he's also a left lane driver. Then you can move back over. Yeah. And then no, no one's breaking the law, even though he's, um, even though there's a car behind you, but no car in front of you. And so uh, what if we're in this scenario, all right? And the, the blue car is... Um, making some pr progress on the semi truck so the, the blue car is starting to pass the semi so who's breaking the law here right so, so the blue car is uh, um it, it seems like they're obviously breaking the law because there's uh, no one in front of them but there's cars behind them except they're passing so they're not breaking the law so the van has someone in front of them, so it doesn't matter if anyone's behind them. They can't go any faster than the blue car, so they're not breaking the law. And then uh, the red car uh, can't go any faster. So, um, he's not breaking the law. So, but a lot, of, or some people have argued that the silver car and the red car are breaking the law because. Um, they are in the left lane, but they're not passing anyone. But as we said before, right, they're they're allowed to do that as long as they're going as fast as um, the speed of traffic. So, what if these three cars are in the left lane, but the semi truck is actually going faster than them? Who's breaking the law? So, so really. It, as soon as the semi truck is driving faster than all of them, they're all breaking the law because they're 
not going the speed of traffic and they're not driving to the right. How, however, right, you also not allowed to move to move right when there's a car there. So w what should happen is the semi should get here and the, the red car should then move over. So basically the rule of thumb is if someone passes you on the right, you are driving below the speed of traffic and as soon as they get ahead of you, you should really pull in behind them. So that's uh, another um, basically rule of thumb. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to cover. Right. So I don't I don't think so. There so there is some case law regarding accidents that um you don't necessarily it, some people try and use that to argue that you you don't have to move over because they they won in court. Right? And and some of those arguments are so this uh, blue car is trying to pass the truck and this minivan comes up and driving super fast and runs it in the back of the blue car. So then the, the, the minivan sues the blue car saying, well, I, I would have run into you if you had been um, over, over to the right. Um, I'm sorry, that's the wrong circumstance. Let's, let's move the truck, all right? So the silver car comes screaming up, runs into the, to the blue car, all right? The silver car sues the blue car and says, well, you weren't supposed to be in that lane because you weren't driving as fast as I was, and, and sues him and tries to make him partially responsible, uh, at, at, you know, at least 1% responsible for the accident. Well, the courts have ruled that he's zero response. 0% responsible for the, this car hitting him. Even though he is obligated to, to move right, uh, he couldn't have expected that him being in the left lane would um, cause an accident. So the, the other case law be, besides that uh, um, proves or shows that you uh, should stay right. So even if you disagree, if if you haven't if interpreting this different, just know that the case law has decided that you have to you have to stay right, um, or to to not get a ticket, uh, regardless of um, you know fault. If an accident occurs, you have to stay right and not to get a ticket. And a, a lot of people continue to think that that's not the case because they'll Google and read some you know, other random person who uh, doesn't study the law and and believe it. But uh, California does indeed have a stay right rule. You you are, of course, if you're on, the only one on the street, you're welcome to drive in the left lane, but uh, you really should prob probably stay in the right lane. All right, so Let's talk about if if you get get a ticket and go to to traffic court in California. So it's a lot different than other states. Um, for example, if you live in Washington State, that um, first hearing for your for your ticket is actually um, like almost. It's actually a hearing, not not an arraignment, and you actually get to discuss the, the merits of um, the ticket with the judge or magistrate that shows up, and it's the the same way in, for example, Michigan. Uh, but in California, that that first um, meeting that you have to discuss your ticket actually is actually an arraignment, and when when you show up to your arraignment. The judge is even going to say, announce the case like as a remnant. They're going to say People versus Smith. If you if you're 
the last name is Smith. Well, they'll tell you the, the crime you're being charged with, and they'll ask you uh, how you're pleading. And you can say, um, you know, n no contest, or you can you can plead guilty, or you can say that you plan on pleading innocent, or you're pleading innocent. So in California, um, the right the officer doesn't have to be there at this this meeting, and and I bring that up because. In in Michigan, the um that first hearing that you show up to for your ticket, the officer is actually supposed to be there, so you can cross examine him and he can testify against you. So in in Michigan, you can actually go to that first hearing and say, um, the judge asks you how you want to plea, and you say first I want to ask is the officer on this ticket in the court, and and when they're not in court, then then you you just ask for it to be dismissed. So, although you probably don't have to ask, the judge knows where you're going. They'll be like, um, "No, the officer's not here. Would you like to dismiss it?" And you say, "Yes." So, in the state of of Washington, the officer also doesn't have to be there, but um, they have to prepare a declaration ahead of time, adding more facts than that was on the citation. Um, and that allows you to do a lot of wiggle wiggling at um, that first hearing too, because there's a lot of things that the the police officer has to do in the written declaration as if they are testifying. Um, they have to describe all elements of the case, and um, they also have to um, validate their their equipment. So th they have to provide written declaration that they um, tested their equipment that day. Um, and then they also have to um, provide actually the device number um, that they were using. And then you can look up um, on the state's website to see if it's um, got its, that device is currently certified. If it's not, then the, 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 you can have the case dismissed. Um, in Washington, there's a more specific statute. Of that, that one is in Michigan also, where, for example, um so right so the the blue car um gets a ticket for not staying in the the uh um in the right lane right when the re red car is is behind him but there's a more st specific so, so that's right 2164a but let's say um 2164b says if you're in a blue blue car and you don't move over so if the officer wrote 2160, um, 2154A, um, but 2154B is more specific because you were in a blue car, then you, you get off because the officer didn't um, state a more specific statute. And then, and like I said, if, if they don't argue all amounts of the crime in their declaration too. For example, if you, if you have to slow down for an emergency vehicle, on the side of the road, All right? Let's say this is an emergency vehicle, and you're you're supposed to s slow down, but in the state of Washington, you only have to slow down if um, the the lights are actively blinking, right? So if they just um, so if they're starting to leave, they're not going to have th their lights on. Um, but even if their lights are on, if you didn't slow down and move over, and and then the cop pulls you over. Uh, the cop has to put that the lights were blinking in a ticket. Whether they were all blinking or not, if they don't write that in there, then you've gotten off. Because you say, well, the law says the lights have to be blinking. The cop didn't specify whether they were blinking or not. So the lights could have been completely bl blinking, and, you, and you, you know you broke the law, but they forgot to add it to, to their declaration. Um, then you get off. So... Um, the state of Washington also has a uh, cool law. It's a deferral, works similar to a criminal case deferral, if, you, if you're familiar with that. But basically, um, you pay $150 to, to defer the ticket, and it, it doesn't get reported. And then if you have no infractions for 12 months, it completely dis disappears. So uh, if that doesn't happen, right, you get points on your license. So, um, the the bad 
I, I guess the sort of bad part is you can only use that every, every seven years and you have to use it instead of um, starting the hearing. So if the hearing starts, um, he'll say, do you want to take a deferral? You say no, then you end up found, being found guilty. It's it's too late to take that deferral. And, and they, they do that, I think, largely to get money, right? But also to try and save some time trying trying the facts. So, uh, so Ca California has some tricky stuff like that too, right? So I'm finally going to move on officially to to, ca to California. So I said before they'll ask you um, how do you plead, and then um, so basically even if you say um, your so basically the the officer doesn't have to be in there in California court either, but they also don't have to provide a, a written declaration because you're not going to be hearing the facts if you plead in this in, in California. They're going to schedule a, another trial date, and it's very likely that the officer is going to be at that trial, um, so you can't get away with that whole Michigan thing where the officer's not there, because because it's a more formal hearing, he's gonna he's going to be there, and then also the officer gets paid paid overtime so he's definitely going to be there but also if you if you plead innocent um, you have to pay what they they call a bail but it's basically how much you would owe on the ticket um, if you were to be found guilty so you have to pay that in advance and then if you're found guilty they'll take out how much you owe out of that um, and then there might be additional fines so you might even owe more than that um, in the rare case it would be less than how much you paid um, but if you're found innocent, you will get, you'll get that money back, but it takes a really long time. The statute says eight, eight to 12 weeks, but with how things are backed up, who knows how long it's, it's currently taking. So, um, there is, so California has a traffic school though, that you can, um, go to, um, to have a reduction in the points that, that goes on your license. And you can do that whether you plead innocent or guilty. But what you can't do before you plead in innocent or guilty is you can only, if you, only if you're pleading guilty, can you ask for a reduction instead. Um, so that's one of those um, tricks where the, the, not only are they trying to get money, but trying to save the court some time by getting you to plead guilty um, if um, you if they like cut how much you owe um, by a little bit. So an another cool thing is um, California has um, com community service that you can do. Um, you can do community service if you, if you don't have the money. And it's basically um, you get paid ten dollars an hour, um, and then some counties even offer a, a payment plan. Uh, I was just looking; I, Orange County offers payment plans. I don't, I don't know what other or counties do. So um, I'll probably have a, a lot more of these because I, I really want to cover four-way stops and talk about the California stop. Um, and then I, I want to probably give you, probably have another one where we go in into traffic court uh, more in detail. Um, but I, I guess I do want to wrap this up a little bit by talking about the theory of why people drive in the left lane. And to be honest, it, it can be annoying, right? If you're doing the right thing, um, and you keep moving, um, moving back over when you're, um, after you've passed someone and then someone, um, drives, is driving on the left side of you for the longest time. And then you coming up on the silver vehicle and you can't move over because this, this car is over here. So now you got a brake. Right, so that you can get in behind him, and sometimes there's even more traffic, so you have to brake a lot to get behind him. 
So it's really inconvenient um, to to um, to stay right sometimes during traffic. So if you're cruising, like you're driving 800 miles on that expressway, you know some people just will stay in the the, the left lane um, in on cruise, and it's really annoying. Other people at, at least will drive, you know as fast as the car in front of them, which I, I, I think is funny, right? So, so if, um, so if you're in front of them, um, they're driving as fast as, you, as fast as you are and, and don't, you know, show any intention of passing you at all. But as soon as you move over, they come flying past you just to get up on the, this person's bumper which is um, always interesting. But what, one thing you, which definitely helps and can encourage people to drive in the left lane, right, is not causing these huge lines of cars in the left lane. Like we talked about where these guys are all driving, uh, driving l legally, right? This person doesn't have to move over here, but they should. How, how how this should be happening is, right, there's all these cars back here. And um, they're coming up on the red car. Red car's driving slow. Right, the blue car pulls out past the red car. And then the silver car pulls out to pass the red car. Now we don't just have tons of people driving in the line in the left lane blocking people that are, are, are trying to get over. So that's all I had. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, comment if you have any questions but I missed something. Um, I guess I did want to say so and another thing is in California for traffic cases because you unless it's a misdemeanor traffic case, if it's just a infraction traffic case where there's no risk of jail time, you don't have the right to a jury trial or to counsel. So um, you might be used to hearing that right on TV and stuff that you have the right to a lawyer but, uh, or a jury trial, but you don't unless you have a risk of, of going to jail. All right, thank you. Have, have a good day.